What's going on, Wolfpack Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Tuffy Talk. And uh, I had a lot of fun talking episode one with Andrew Sanders. And so I said, hey, Macon, come on, drop on. Let's talk a little bit more baseball. And uh, we'll talk uh, a little bit more about our bracket, bracket two. And then we'll get in there and talk about a little bracket one, which is most of the ACC teams. And then we'll maybe make a few predictions and see how we how we think we're, this thing's going to end up. So, Macon, welcome on board. Yeah, man. I uh, just, this is awesome. Being like, this has been state's year, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's, wow. it's so much fun. I, I mean, before we really get into it, it's like, okay, I've been to the ACC men's championship game. I've been to the women's ACC championship game. I've been to the final four run for the men. Now I'm going to college world series. Uh, so yeah. I don't, I, I'd really like to win one of these uh, big, big tournaments. Obviously we won the ACC. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I'm saying everything, but you've been to everything in between, man. So this yeah. is like, uh, this is huge. It's, I think for the program, Honestly, so as a side note, different conversation from the other day, but just thinking about what this could mean for us in terms of like the restructuring of sports and that kind of thing, maybe it yeah. helps you out. But, um, well, to that yeah, point, I, to that I, point, you know, Elliot Avent and Coach Moore kind of met up the other day when state men's basketball, uh, excuse me, men's baseball got back into town and women's basketball was all there. Coach Moore had all of his um, yeah. consistent coaches. We kind of talked about that in episode one. And you you saw Coach Moore saying, like, this is the greatest recruiting tool you can have, to your point, right? Like, when you make these runs, all these sports making runs, it not only boosts your program's status, it boosts your university. And now you're – I bet you're going to see an influx of – Enrollment goes up. Enrollment, correct. So, anyway, but, yeah, you're right. That's a, applications, at least. So Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, they're not, they're not, you know, changing their standards, but um, – right. But, anyway, we'll talk about that another time. But it's just exciting to, you know, have this conversation – this late in the season. Um, yeah. So we, we, we talked, I didn't really give a prediction in episode one. So kind of give me your thoughts real quick about the matchup in Kentucky. Like, where do you, where do you see this playing out for state? Um, I honestly haven't looked a ton into the details on Kentucky. Uh, I know that the number two seed nationally, um, I know they, from what I've um, taken in from other um, media outlets, they're, they're, they're a really good team. I mean, they're yeah. number two national for a reason. Um, they, they're pretty balanced is what it sounds like. Yep. And, uh, that could be, you know, a bummer for state. And because I don't know of how balanced the other teams, if they if we were to face a team like Georgia, who I don't think was balanced, I uh, think they were good hitting, mm-hmm. not great pitching. They, they showed that, um, when it came down to it, yep. you know, it, it makes me a little interested in that, but I think I really feel like I don't know the betting odds right now. I'd be curious. I'm, I really feel like it could be a toss up between NC State and Kentucky. I will say, NC State has won, I mean, series after series after series after series yep. after series, and yep. against the top teams in the country. Yep. And so, does Kentucky scare me? No, I, I don't think if you're the, any of the players on the state, you're like, I, I'm wearing the Why Not Us shirt, right? Like, these guys here, the pro- state's probably got, um, you know, not the best, not as good at betting odds as some of the other teams. But I'm like, why sh- Why would we think we couldn't beat Kentucky or Texas A&M, who's yeah. also on our side of the bracket? So, yeah. Well, I think to your point, right, I, I, there's not many teams that can boost the resume or boast the resume that state has with, you know, we've already beaten Carolina, who's on the other side of the bracket, two out of three. We've already yeah. beat Virginia two out of three. That's on the other side of the bracket. We split yeah. with Florida State one to one. I you can't say that about these other teams. Like and and you have four and four. So to to your point, I, I think we match up perfectly with all these schools. I don't you know, maybe Tennessee is probably the the outlier, but they haven't proven anything in the last couple of years that they've been on these big stages that they can go out and finish the job. So mm-hmm. I really do like state's chances in this tournament. Um, and I think if you stay on the winner's side bracket, kind of how we talked about in episode one, you can really do damage because you can you can really shorten your pitchers and go with the guys that you truly, really do trust instead of just putting out the guys that you believe and, that will get you done. And especially when you have a little bit of extra rest in between yes. games too, right? So yeah. that, that helps out. Yeah, so I kind of want to talk about Florida a little bit. This is a team that, you know – they were kind of like Wake Forest where, you know, they were getting votes and, you know, depending on what publication you, you subscribe to, they were preseason one, preseason two, and, and, and some of the polls just like Wake Forest. And it's a team that underachieved for most of the year. They they were they ended up finishing just like one or two games above 500. I think they were 28 and 27 start tournament time, and now they're up to 34 and 28. So they've, they've kind yeah. of widened that. But, 
it, it's a team with an RPI of 16, which is, you know, right, a, you know, right around where state was um, nationally. And, and it's a team that feasted pretty well on out of conference play. They were 21 and 11, but only 13 and 17 in conference play. And, and there are some common opponents. So um, kind of looking at those common opponents that we, we have with them, kind of give me your thoughts they're making. Yeah. I, I mean, I was looking back at Florida when they played like just, you know, I know their, their MO right now is in the MO, but their reputation right now is, Hey, they shouldn't have been in this tournament. Right. And, you know, 13 and 17 in SEC is not, not great. And, um, it is a tough conference, yeah. but you know, I, I look at it, I'm thinking just generally speaking, strong wins. I would say at the beginning of their regular season, they didn't get any uh, series wins until they got to Georgia. Now, Georgia, they, they got two out of three, um, at, in, in Athens against Georgia. Um, and then I know they've got wins, uh, again, they think we said Florida state too. I'm trying to look back up over here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so South Carolina, it's, it's yeah. South Carolina, Florida State. Excuse yeah. me. So uh, they're they're a solid team. I know they got one of the best offensive players in the country on their team too. So yeah, Jack uh, Yeah, they're, they're a good team. But I don't know um, if how does how similar they might be to a Georgia team. If they got like one of those big hitters, I don't know if their pitching is really strong or not. But um, I was looking at their. Uh, record a little bit further and you know for them being uh like i think they're 19 19 uh against top 25 rpi teams yeah but two and six against the 26 or 50 um they're not they're they're stronger at home than they are away they're sub 500 on the road i'm not really sure um what to make of this team they do have the number one strength of schedule yes in the country so that's probably part of it. And they're getting the benefit of the doubt there, but you're seeing this thing, the schedule probably come into effect uh, with how they've kind of been through it. Mm -hmm. And now nothing's going to really, you know, catch them off guard or um, be too tough for them. It's just more losses than you like to see on a team. And, yeah. uh, but they've earned it, right. They've earned it. NC state in basketball. Like I said, I'm wearing the why not us shirt, but like they, uh, they've gone on a little bit around themselves. So um, I, I don't know. I think any team right now, if you're playing hot right now, you're dangerous. And that's Florida. I mean, they went to beat Clemson, right? Mm -hmm. You know, two games and they won, you know. So I, I think I think they're going to be tough. Uh, it'd be interesting to watch that matchup against Texas A&M. But what are your thoughts, Greg? Yeah, you, 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 we were talking about Jack Cuglione. Um, You know, he's not only their best hitter, um, he's their best pitcher as well. Uh, so he's a two-way player that uh you know he he he's the kind of guy that he'll pitch and still hit at the same time like he's kind of like um um i just forgot the guy's name from the dodgers show um otani I don't know. yeah otani yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, very similar um with, with the way you know that style um you know condon he's gonna be the player of the year but kai Glione is probably gonna get some votes too he's he's that good his his numbers are right on par um, he, he's, he's batting four eleven, and he's got 33 home runs and, and 68 RBIs. The, the stats are very, very similar and, and state, state handled them. State handled that, 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 that Georgia team in Georgia's ballpark, which is much smaller than, um, Charles Schwab field. So I, I, I think we can, we can handle that. Um, it, you know, if, if, if it comes that way, whether in the winner's bracket or loser's bracket, um, uh, obviously we hope it's the winner's bracket. Um, so I do like our changes. Uh, the, the next best hitter, uh, home run wise is 20, um, Colby Shelton, uh, the, yeah. the, the Georgia Bulldogs had several, um, you know, they had the one in the thirties and then like two or three, I think in the thirties. So it, it's a, it's a good opponent, but where, I, where, where I think state gets them. And we talked about it before it's good pitching hits, uh, good pitching beats, good hitting. And I just don't see the pitchers from Florida. Like everyone's got like, other than Caglione, like everyone else has pretty much got a five ERA or worse. Um, so yeah. I think that really pay, plays in other than Robert Satin. Um, but he's only, he's only appeared in like a couple of games. Um, so I don't really care. Yeah, I'm looking here to see how they compare um, offensively, um, at least batting and um, on uh, pitching compared to us pitching, you know, their average, you know, pitching numbers is pretty low. Yeah. Um, I think they're I, just standard bat, standard pitching metrics. They're um, ranked 240 in the country um, compared. I think on offense, they're 
um, close to 200 and state is 90th for a comparison, yeah. but they're just catching, they're, they're getting hot at the right time. I think those, those games they played back in the regular season are helping them now, yeah. which to me makes them dangerous because yeah. you don't know really what takes back from them at this point other than they're winning. So, well, and the other thing too, is, you know, Caglioni's got to go game one. So you're not going to, you're not going to face him. You're going to face their number two guy. And by all accounts, and if I'm just going off of, you know, raw, raw numbers here, uh, the, the next guy with the game started is Pierce Coppola. I was, I'm sorry, Liam Peterson. He's got 14 games started and he's got almost a six ERA and he's got a record of three and four. So I, I would yeah. take Dom Fritt and if he's your number two starter over this guy, just, just looking at raw numbers, I, obviously I don't know what he throws. I, you know, we don't follow Florida that closely here. Um, right. You know, I, let me see, is this guy a lefty? Cause if he's a lefty now I'm worried. Let me see uh, if he's a lefty. Uh, thanks D one. You don't tell me if he's a lefty or a righty. Uh, so, <laughs> um, I'm oh, sorry. There it is at the top. He, he, he's a righty. So I'm, I'm yeah, not worried about this guy at all. Um, if, again, if he, if he, yeah. if he's the one that's going to be the presumptive second game starter. So, um, so it'll be interesting to see how that Texas A&M Florida game goes. Cause that'll obviously de- determine, you know, and our result will determine who we play. So let's jump over to Texas A&M a little bit so we can keep this thing moving yeah. down the road. Um, again, Texas A&M, they had an interesting series with Oregon. Um, the one game where Oregon was up like four or five runs and they basically walked six or seven guys in six or seven guys in a row and they lost the lead. Um, whereas Florida, like we said, they, 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 they were struggling against um, Clemson and I'm, I'm running, running everything through my head. State and Florida were the only two teams that actually won on the road in the super regionals. Everyone else won at home. So just something to keep in mind uh, about. The I'm trying to think about that, yeah. right? So UNC over West Virginia, yeah. UNC, Florida State, Kentucky over Oregon yeah. State, and um, um, who was? Yeah, you're yeah. right. I didn't think yeah. about that. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you are right. So that's that's huh. that. But um, looking at Texas A&M overall record of 49 and 13, uh, 34 and three at home, which is just an incredible number. Um, away they were 12 and eight, which is still you know had a winning record. Um, Neutral, they were three and two. RPI, they were number two in the country. Non-conference, RPI was three. Strength to schedule was 18. Uh, this is a quality, quality team. But before we jumped on, we were kind of talking about some of their injuries, and they, they've got they've got a key one. Before we continue, I want to take a quick second to tell you about our sponsor, Flatlands Dress-Up Insurance Group, that has your whole world covered, with agents in five offices throughout eastern North Carolina to help you decide how much coverage you need. Offering policies for home and auto, recreational vehicles, commercial, crop, health, life, and employee benefits. They are able to combine options to find a comprehensive solution that works for you. Flatlands Jessup protects the things you love so you can spend less time wearing and more time enjoying them. Find them on Facebook and Instagram at Flatlands Jessup. You can also visit their webpage at www.flatlandsjessup.com. So please make sure to go and check them out. Yeah, and uh, they've got some guys there. I can't, they can't really pull up their names. There. I actually just lost it. But Sadal, I can't remember the guy's name, the, how you pronounce that one. Um, and then Montgomery, um, I know one of the guys is their all-star and it's a right fielder for them is my understanding. Yeah, Montgomery and then he's got 27 home Montgomery. runs in the year. Yeah. And then I guess Sadal is a, a pitcher mm-hmm. for them. So, um, it got a, got a coworker of mine, a and M guy who's talking about it. So it's a, uh, that's going to be tough. You know, you point, you made Greg that they're undefeated against teams that aren't in the top 25 of RPI. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a great team this year. Um, you're only, you're going to have to be the best of the best to beat mm-hmm. them. And I think the point you made, Florida is like one of the only teams that has, are they real, are they the only team that's won a series against them this uh, year? I believe so. Let me just back up and, and check that. Yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking here, Florida. I think they are. Yeah. No, no. I yeah, yeah. Only LSU, yeah. LSU, LSU beat them and Ole Miss. Sorry. So Ole Miss is um, a little bit of a surprise there. Ole Miss wasn't a very good team this year. Um, yeah, they got they have a standalone loss to Tennessee as well. Yeah, it was in the tournament. Um, yeah. Right. So, um, yeah, not you're you're not beating a lot of you're not beating Texas A&M, uh, but that was again a fully loaded Texas A&M. You losing your best 
offensive player, one of your best offensive players. Um, well, and they have such a they Montgomery. have such a home field advantage uh, where they play at. Uh, it's you know sure. the, the numbers that I just showed you, twelve and eight and three and two. Um, you know, just the completely different team away from um, College Station. Uh, that that ballpark they play in Blue Bell Blue Bell Park is just it's an electric environment from the bubbles and all of that. Uh, it's very intimidating as I as I saw. Um, watching that Oregon game, and they they were the ones that invented the ball four, ball four, ball five, ball five. Like they were the ones that. I thought that was out there. Was it, was it? Oh yeah, yeah. You would have thought, right? Um, yeah, the way they yeah, were cheering. Yeah, yeah. but uh, again, intimidating place to play at. I, oh, oh, like, I mean, so far in the you know taking it from a little different perspective, they're not winning the shot game in Omaha right now. They are like dead last in the uh, shot challenge. If anyone follows that, but um, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I think they're they are a good team. Uh, they they've got hitters. They've got three guys. Well, technically now only two guys. Well, one, two, three. Yeah, they only have two guys now with twenty or more home runs. Um, losing Montgomery is the big piece of that. He's their he's their all world hitter. He leads pretty much in all of the all of the statistics. Um, he he you know he's third in average. He's um, second home runs, you know, he's at the top of all those leaderboards. Uh, yeah. They don't steal a lot of bases. They, they steal some, uh, we, when we were doing our, our preview with, um, Kentucky, they've got three guys over 20 stolen bases. So that's something that you have to, to look at, look at, um, the, the Florida, Florida doesn't steal bases. They're, they're much like Georgia where they, they, they kind of roll with that long ball. Um, that they're, they're not going to get thrown out on the base path. So just a different, yeah. d- different approach. I'll tell, you what, though, I'll tell you what though, it looks like they're really strong with their pitching. Um, yeah, they are. I know they've, yeah. So they've got, they've got the number one um, pitcher from an ERA standpoint in the country yeah. uh, and Evan yeah, but again, Game one and game one guy, right. We wouldn't see him well, most likely. You know, not. Um, so, uh, but he's got a 1.66 ERA uh, as a team. Their ERA is six nationally with a 3.94. So, you know, elite pitching yeah. team, right? Yeah. At this point. So, um, but we mentioned it. They're beatable lately. Uh, they, they, no, lately. They, they've been beatable this season at certain spots. And Florida's one of those teams who has beaten them. Um, would I think they probably get revenge? Yes. But also, they don't have two of their better players, particularly, you know, with Montgomery. Mm-hmm. So, could they get revenge on Florida? I don't know, but it'll be a really fun matchup. I think that would have started yeah, evening. Seven, so seven o'clock. Seven. So, um, yeah, I don't know who would, who do you want to see win that game, Greg? Um, I want to see Florida. Me, I think it's Florida because yeah. then you want to ease your path to yeah, get that but second I mean, I win. Don't, again, you... you know, I don't know if it's necessarily an easier path. Like the numbers might say that just because how Florida squeaked in. But the, I don't think that's the same Florida team from the beginning of the year. And you can say the same about state. That's not the same same team you were seeing in the middle of the week in, in April or, or, or early even May. It's it's not the same yeah. team. Yeah. But what I do like, and again, I think our pitching matches up better against Florida because we have better arms. But the right-handers yes. pitchers. They get right-handers. Right-handers. Yeah, I got you. So I don't know. Yeah. I, I I'm excited to see it get started. Um, let's switch over to bracket one real quick, and then we'll do some predictions. Sure. Uh, you have Carolina and Virginia. Uh, I think that's a great matchup. And, and then really the matchup uh, of the first round, if you will, or the first games is that is going to be that Tennessee uh, Florida state game with Jamie Arnold going in that potent Tennessee offense. And, and I think that's going to be, there's going to be some, there, there's going to be some, some barn burners in these games. I think, I don't think you're going to see games getting away like mm-hmm. you did, uh, like, like us against Georgia. I don't think you're going to see those lopsided games, uh, at least not in the first game. Uh, you might see them when you start getting to the second and third games and, you, and the pitchers get a little bit, you know, not as, uh, not as strong as your first, you know, your first guy or even your second guy. But again, I still sure. think with the way state lines up, you know, you, you have this big ballpark, you have fly ball pitchers and Sam and Dom Fritton that, I think we'll just go get it done. And you have, you know, um, you have Whitaker who, who was on the 21 team, didn't pitch because of injury, but he's, you know, he's, you know, got some experience with, from the other guys. Uh, we still have like six, six guys on the squad that I don't have 21, 2021 experience. 
I, I just think, you know, I, I was co- joking with Coach Avent the other night when I said, hey, the 2021 redemption tour continues and we're back in Omaha. And I think there's nothing more that this club wants to go win it for Coach Avent because of what that right. you know, kind of riding the wrong from 2021. Yeah. Yeah. To me, I'm, I'm looking, I, I think state, I was trying to think just as a fan, like say you're a casual, you're a, you're a yeah. local there yeah. in Omaha. Who are you pulling for? I kind of think since it's so mm-hmm. fresh in people's mm-hmm. memories, I think state may be the town favorite, and it's just because hey, they got yeah. screwed last time. I, I could definitely see a scenario where that, that, that plays out. And, and to be honest with you, I think if it's not them, I do think it's Florida because of the concept of hey, they shouldn't be here, right? The yeah. underdog, so to speak. Um, all the yeah. other teams are ranked, and Florida's well, not. So it's one yeah, of those they kind of look like the twenty twenty two Ole Miss team that you know from. If you follow state baseball, it, it, you know, for all intents and purposes, it was us and M- Ole Miss getting that last spot in that tournament. And then Ole Miss goes and wins the whole dang thing. And, and Florida looks kind of like this team where you didn't think they would make yeah. it into the tournament. And now they're, they're, now they're, you know, four or five wins away from, from winning the whole thing. Right. Right. Yeah. It's, it's going to be exciting. Um, I think. I was looking just – I think the what's interesting, I know there's a dynamic between the, mm-hmm. the ACC, mm-hmm. SEC yeah. exclusive World Cup World Series. NC State's the only ACC right. team on our side of the bracket. Um, conversely, I think the only other – the only SEC team on their side of the Tennessee. bracket is Tennessee. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah, seeing UNC and versus Virginia will be fun, I think, to see that. I know Virginia and can really hit yeah. Southern Carolina. There's probably a lot of offense yeah. in that game. Um, but uh, – you know, Tennessee versus Florida State will be – I know people talk about, you know, Arnold is a good pitcher for Florida State. So, having your your ace pitcher going up against a really strong team like Tennessee would be really cool to see as well. Um, that's just my, my other thoughts I have with yeah. that side of the bracket. Um, there is a 50-50 chance of rain on Saturday. So, I'm curious to see how that will uh, make things play out. You know, uh, hopefully there are no weather issues. Uh, so state, yeah. So if state wins, um, they would play Monday. Um, if they lose, you basically got to win like four or five in a row just to, you know, make it out. And it's, it's tough. It's tough. That first game you gotta, you gotta have that first game. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I think that first game is, I mean, those first two are for sure, but uh, getting that first one is crew. I've been trying to describe the, how it works in a concise way to those who aren't really interested in, the shortest way I can say it is just like yeah. it's double elimination. You lose yeah. till you go home. And uh, but uh, it basically again it plays out just like a regional would. Uh, it's pool play. Um, uh, I do you know in the best two out of three of the championship game. So um, Greg, who like I guess yeah. thinking of this uh, tournament, we're kind of coming this World Series. Uh, what are your thoughts on who emerges from our side of the bracket and then uh, the other side of the bracket? Pool B, I guess we'll go pool B, pool A. Cause pool B yeah, so, you know, we have the second least amount of wins in, in our side of the bracket with 38, Florida being the lowest with 34. Um, that kind of goes along with the odds that you've been seeing where Florida had like the seventh best odds or seventh worst odds, I guess is how you would say that. And, and state had the eighth worst. Um, so we were like the lowest chance of winning the whole thing. Sure. Uh, you know, on the other side of the bracket, Everyone's got 40, 45 wins or more, uh, 46 wins or more. Uh, so, so you would think, you know, that's the, that's the favorites up in bracket one. So that's going to be like a celebrity death matchup there. Yeah. And may, may the strongest person come mm-hmm. out of that. Uh, I, I, I still, I mean, Texas A&M has 49 wins. Kentucky has 45. I, I still like our chances in this thing. I, I think that, you know, we hit, we field, we've limited our walks. I think we, we're doing all the right things to what you need to do in order to compete in a tournament like this. So um, I, I, th- I think, I mean, if I had to put money on it, I'd probably put a few dollars on us getting out of this thing. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you think, uh, you think NC State going to come out of a, uh, I guess, bracket? I do. I, I, you know, I just, it just, yeah. I just seeing how we've have, we've matched up really well with sec teams. You know, we, we, we beat South Carolina and, and the Raleigh regional, we took two out of three right. and Georgia um, against one of the top five, top seven hitting teams in all of the country. 
and and we 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 yeah. quieted their bats. I mean, in two of the in two of the games that we won, they only scored six six runs, and they had the the eleven run outburst. But if you add all that up, seventeen runs, like that's not horrible in a, in a three game series. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just looking here. I mean, uh, at Kentucky's, you know, schedules they've had, and um, they lost yeah. to South Carolina. Um, we we beat South Carolina. Um, just as a reference, uh, I think they they won the series against Florida. Um, you know, to me, um, I don't. There's not a lot. Of, there's not a lot of games on the Kentucky schedule where they lost um, when they're scoring a decent amount of points. If, if, if they're going to Sounds cliche, low number of points. They're probably not winning. Um, but I mean, I don't know. I, I do. Th- I know state is playing at a much better mm-hmm. level than they were. I think mm-hmm. that makes them dangerous. Um, I wonder how predictable Kentucky is right now because they have really been the same team for the most part, um, at least to the, the generic fans. eye. Um, I don't know, man, I get the, I, I'll put it this way. I think if State can beat Kentucky, I think yeah. they win the second game. I think they're going to be – at that point, there's going to be confidence mm-hmm. there, and they're going to get it. I will say what I personally think is going to happen. I think they're going to maybe drop game one and get in and play and win the game two and game three and come back and have a harder road to get there. That's kind of what I think is going to happen. But it's not because they don't think they can done. I just think there's, that Kentucky is really good. But I'm not saying it's like a, oh, right. this is definitely going to happen. I'm saying like, man, I am splitting hairs here. I don't know. I'm, get, I'm not getting this super strong. Yeah, they're going to get it. I think that um, – because to me, when I've seen NC State lately, there's still a lot of up and down with NC State. Um, I mean, they you got to think – I mean, to me, when I'm watching the Georgia game, they crushed Georgia first game all yeah. the way around the second game. Um, I don't see – Kentucky just absolutely crushing other teams. I did it except except they did just win ten to zero against Oregon State. Yeah. That was the first yeah. game. So and like we talked about the first mind. Um, episode, we'll we'll get wrapped up here really quickly. You know they held Oregon State to three yeah. hits in two games. I mean that's really good pitching. Um, uh, so yeah. Look, if, if the bats come alive, uh, I, I like our chances. You know, we just we just can't beat our we can't we can't beat ourselves. Yeah. If we get out of game one with a win, I, I your odds skyrocket at that point, and um, you know then you have a team that's, you know, you know. I, again, I like our I like our number two pitchers against a lot of these guys. I do. I, I think. And all of that too. I don't know how deep the other how how deep is uh, the other uh, bullpens, right? Compared to NC State, I I think you can make an argument. NC State is one of the top two or three most well rounded. Yeah, D one baseball right said that we you, between us and North Carolina had the best bullpens in this in this tournament, and so you know that's how you make a run. You know, and and, and the thing is, is our bullpen guys. We had two guys in the bullpen that have started. So if we have to go long because a guy struggles. We're not out of it, you know. If if if, if a if a yeah. you know Sam or Dom or Logan gives up three or four runs in a couple of innings, you you can pivot and go to one of these guys and still be okay. Again, as long as you win, because if yeah. you win, you keep getting those other days the, the, that extra time off. And I guess my thing is how I guess just a couple of quick thoughts. Then how long of a leash do you think our pitchers get? Because they got to think you got extra rest on these days, um, but it's a hot. The stakes are. Well, they they're are, high, yeah. but they are. Yeah. They they're magnified. There's, there's no think? doubt about it. I, I, I just think the the key the key is is no no, and the coaches know this stuff, and so they they know when their guys are not got their best stuff or their A stuff or they're running out of gas. The key is to have guys ready to roll and and not get your guy too far into trouble, like we kind of saw with Sam against Duke, where. You know, they were like he had a no hitter through four and they got a couple of dinks and dunks. And the next thing you know, there's a grand slam. It's five nothing. And then you can't even get a, a, a relief pitcher until it's six nothing. By then it's too late, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and and I thought right. that they kind of made the, they made better moves against Georgia with Marone. Um, and again, I, they brought in both Marone and Dude. And, and this would be my only complaint. And it's easy to have complaints after a win. You would like to see those guys get clean innings because they have starter stuff, and you would like to have them be able to throw from th- from the, from the windup and not the stretch. Um, it's just a, it's just better for pitchers to come in and less pressure. I mean, 
I mean, think about yeah. it. Dune comes in against Condon in the bottom of the fifth the other night, and this base is loaded. Like, you, there is no room for error against the best player in all of college baseball. Yeah, you're not. Yeah, it worked out because Dune is the dude, yeah. but I, I, I would think that you'd probably want it a little bit cleaner than that. Yeah, he's a one of yeah. one. Anyway, right? so, um, so, and I'm uh, for me, like I said, I, I, I think on the other side of the bracket, um, you know, honestly, I think it's Tennessee I, and everybody else. I think, yeah, I, I, I don't know how it wouldn't be Tennessee, although Evansville yeah. gave him beat him right. So they're they're they they show signed a little uh, game, game two starter, but, right? Uh, game two starters again. Them. They won the game two in that series. Yeah, and I would honestly, I just love to see them smoke Florida State after our, I, you know. I, Look, I told you during the ACC, I wanted I wanted Florida State in the ACC championship game for all the nonsense. Uh, I would I would times that yeah. and take it for the national championship after all the crap. Well, and they're and they're not, not playing at home right now, right, so this right, is not going right. to be the same for Florida State. So, um, and they they're very good at home, and yep. it's different on the road for them. Yeah, um, we'll see, we'll see. I, I think it'll be interesting. I I totally can see yeah. State playing. I've already been. My wife's already been talking yeah. to me. I know you're going to be there, but hey, if they can make it, make it a little bit of a run there, I, yeah. I, we're going to try to be there. So um, it's going to be fun. I hope a lot yeah. of Bullfight Nation travels yeah. out, um, shows out. Yeah. So uh, we'll, so, um, you know, depending on how this thing turns out, we'll we'll see how we do our live streams the next week because uh, you know if we're in the winners bracket, we'd be playing right during our normal Monday night stream. So maybe the, maybe there'll be a watch party or something. Uh, hopefully we stay out of that losers bracket. And then um, obviously if we make it to the championship round, I'm sure we'll do a preview for that. But uh, Wolfpack Nation just always is, you know, appreciate your support. Make sure you're following us. We'll have all kinds of content when I get out there. We'll be, you know, we sent shooting some videos and, and some pictures back, back to the home front so we can get posted up for you guys. And uh, I'm excited. Uh, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm ready yeah. for this to happen I, I want it for the guys so bad i want them to be able to write their story the right way because it was written for them and, and i want them to be able to write their right and tell their own story and this can be this will be a 30 right? for 30 all if of they that, come the back and win now, this thing on this one it has to be a 30 for 30. yes especially with sam highfield yeah. and some of his players still on the team no, he, Surratt, no, was Surratt no, on that team no, too no, wasn't no, he? souls was he wasn't Logan, I thought he but he didn't been. pitch willison was on that team carson falskin garrett payne who unfortunately is no longer yeah whitaker yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, we even so have a player from great, 2021 that, that wasn't on our team. Yeah, uh, you say he transferred in Hollis Fanning. Hmm. Who was that? Yeah, I just think the success yeah. the programs are having in NC State yeah. is rolling. All right, well, let's get out of here. So, um, let's go awesome. around the pack or Oma Pack, right? I think that that's the slogan. I think yeah, or Omaha's. Um, right. Omaha. Yeah, let's go do it. All yeah. right. Well, Pack Nation, we'll see you. We'll see yeah. you. Well, I, hope, I hope I see you in Omaha. If you see me, come take a picture with me. I love right. it. So, all right. See you later, Pack.